Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to slide down a wall so you are sliding down slowly or falling next to it slowly. So if you have full damage in a game or something this just is an easy way to slide down a wall. So I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So if we go up to it we can just hold E and we'll slide down slowly. As you can see there's no animation for this, that's just because I couldn't find one for free anywhere or couldn't find one easily anyway. But obviously if you have your own then you can easily implement this in an animation blueprint or something along those lines. But if you have an animation and you want help including it, then just let me know in the comments down below, or email, or discord, or something like that, and I can easily help you out with that. But we can just hold E and slide down, and this works whatever way we're facing, doesn't just have to be facing forwards. So I'll get right into it now. So I'll just go ahead and delete the code, and then show you what to do. So our first step is we're going to open up our character blueprint. So for me that's the third person character, but for you this could be first, third or whatever you've named it. So once you've opened that up, what we're going to do is just want to find some space. Now here we're going to use an E keyboard event. So for me I'm going to right click and get an E keyboard event like so. You can use whatever you like or you can set up an action mapping for this instead. So if you go to edit, project settings, go down to input, we can then create an action mapping here. And you can just put it in and change the key like that so you can get E again down here. But for me, I just want this to be a general one. So I'm just going to be putting E here like so. So now out of this E key here, what we want to do is we want to set a few variables. And this just is to make it easier for us to use them later on. So what we want to do is we're going to right click and get actor location. So get actor location like that. And we're going to right click again and get actor rotation like so. And this is so obviously we know where the player is and which way they're facing. So we'll right click on the return values of these and promote them both to variables, naming them accordingly. So this one I'll call actor location, plug it into the on pressed of the E keyboard event there and do the same for the rotation and this one called actor rotation like so. And this is just so that we can call these variables later on to easily use them. And now after this, what we want to do is hold down B, left click and get a branch like so. And the condition of this is basically going to be our falling velocity on the Z. So we want to make sure we can only do this when we are falling and falling down, not falling up or left or right, just down. So to do that, what we're going to do is right click up here and we're going to get velocity like so. So this is going to get the current velocity of our player. We're going to right click the return value and split the structure pin out of return value Z. So the Z axis, what we're going to do is get a less than. So a float is less than a float and we're going to set this to be about minus 50. You can choose any other value, so depending on how fast you want them to be falling first or how slow, but I wouldn't recommend going below minus 50, so closer to zero, as that is then when it starts to get a bit buggy, so you can then start doing it more going left and going right, and if you go above zero, obviously you can do it going up as well, which we don't want. So we're going to plug this boolean return value into the condition of this branch here. And now if we come out of true, that means we can only fire off this other line of code if we're falling down. So we're going to do that. So we'll come out of true and we'll get a line trace by channel here. So line trace by channel, the start, what we want is to get the actor location. So get actor location, variable we made earlier, and put that in the start of the line trace here. Now the end, we want this to just be a little bit further away from the player. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the actor rotation variable we made. We're gonna come at this and we're going to get the forward vector, like so, as this first one I want to be directly in front of the player. And then I'll move this down a bit. We'll come out of the return value of that and we'll get a times, so we multiply, so a vector times a float. This float value here is how far in front of the player we want this to be. So I'm going to set this to times 200, meaning that it's going to be 200 units in front of the player. So obviously increase this for it to be further away, decrease it if you want it to be closer to the player. So the player has to be closer to the wall. And then what we're going to do is then get the actor location again, come out of that and get an addition, so a vector plus a vector the other value puts in the multiplication we just did and this is going to go into the end like so. So essentially we're getting the forward way the player is facing to make sure that we're only doing this in front of the player times in that by 200 so it's 200 units in front of us and we're adding this to the actor location to make it a more of a straight line and plugging that into the end there. So it's going to go between the actor location and 200 units in front. And now just for testing I'm going to do draw debug type for duration Obviously, if you don't want the red lines anymore, set this to none. And then what we're going to do after this is hold down B, left click again to get a branch with the condition of this return value here for the line trace. 
and out of true so if we have hit something essentially so if it's true we've hit something so the wall we're going to get a reference to the character movement here and drag out of this and set the gravity scale plug that into true obviously and we want to set this to zero so they're going to be falling slower so that is how we slow the player down and now for false we want to do another line trace so i'm just going to copy all of this so select all Control c Control v to duplicate down here plug the false into there like that now the only thing I'm going to change is this multiplication here. So this one I want to be directly behind the player. So I'm going to set this to minus 200 instead. So it's going to go 200 units behind the player. So what I might also do is just comment these as well. So this is in front of player. I won't comment the whole thing otherwise it will include this as well. This is behind player. This is full slowly. Just simple things like that. And again, the rest of that is the same. So now if we copy this again, so control C, control V. And so now actually we can also just duplicate this part up here. So the branch and the set gravity scale, plug the branch into there like so. And so now what I'm gonna do is again, duplicate this. So copy all of these. So copy everything there, select it all, control C, control V. Fold to that branch, goes into the line trace there. This time we're not gonna get the forward vector. What we're gonna do is come out the actor rotation. So delete that and then get right vector so now we're going to be seeing if it's to the side of the player plug that in there change this back to just 200 like so and then this is right of the player so you can comment these differently to which makes the most sense for you but this works for me keep the rest of it the same again obviously we also make sure we plug in the return value there so i didn't up here make sure you do that and then one final time select all of those Control c Control v plug the false into there and again this time we're going to change 200 to minus 200 as this is going to be for the left of the player so left of the player as it's going to be inversing the right which is obviously left like so now one final step is back up here when we let go of e what we want to do is set this gravity scale back to the default value so we're not slowly falling everywhere or slowly jumping up so we can just select it over here and control c control v to paste it over here plug it into released like that so when we let go of e and we'll set it back to its default of one so now we can compile and save this and this should work so what it's doing is it's going to be seeing if we are falling down if we are it's going to get the forward vector so put a line trace in front of us if it doesn't hit anything it will do behind if it doesn't hit right if it doesn't hit anything the left and if it does hit one of these it won't do the others and it will set the gravity to zero so we can fall down slowly so let's test this out now if we hit play we hit e we don't see any red lines but if we're over here and we're falling down we see a red line and we fall slower like that so you can see this is our normal falling speed and this is falling slower and as you can see it works for both directions as well or all directions sorry so like that try and get it facing backwards as well so as you can see we are now falling a lot slower Again, if you want animations, you can do that very simply in the animation blueprint, but I won't be able to do that now as I don't have an animation. But I could probably show you something very quick. So if you open up your animation blueprint, which is in this content mannequin animations for me, third person and MVP, what we'd simply do is just add a new state in here. So right click and add a state. And for the transitional lines going there, we'd want to see if the a boolean, see if it's true, and we can just set that off of the so set it to is falling off true and off false set it back to false so again if you want more detail and help into that i can do that just let me know in the comments down below however this will be it done for this video so what i might do is just right click this so select all right click collapse to macro make sure you don't actually select the event though and then collapse to macro like so just to keep it a bit neater and i'll call this wall slide like so again just to keep this a little bit neater like so and then I can just change what these are called so line trace reset gravity like that and then that is it sorted so this just makes it a lot neater for our code as we don't have all that long line trace code there it's just a nice little neat macro so again that is it done so I think that'll be it for this video so we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so that we can go up to a wall pull off line traces and if we are near the wall close enough to it which we can also set up by ourselves, we will fall down slowly like so so we'll slowly slide down the wall which again i've told you how to set up animations and you can get extra help if you would like so thanks so much for watching 
I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.